wherever you're watching us from. This is Touched by Faith, a life-inspiring program where our faith touches God and God touches us. I am Ayorinde Adibido, and I will be your host on the program today. Looking through the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, it says that the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. And moving on to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18, God declares that your expectation shall not be cut off. Looking into Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Speaking of Abraham, God said, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. Now, imagine many couples with this expectation, with this mindset, waiting for so long, for so many years, waiting to hear the sound of children running around with them in the house, and yet with nothing to show for it. As some will say, it is better imagined. But the good news is this, that our God is still in the business of doing wonders. It is with this confidence and joy that I want you to receive the word of God as it comes through our Father and the Lord, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch. Adejari Adeboe. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome you especially to the Open Heavens International Center. I tell you that I had several encounters with God in that house. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The anointing in that house is uh, awesome. me decree at this stage that those of you who might be sick in any way before this program is over may the almighty God give you pure healing Amen. pure healing could as we have seen in this example require a second touch from God it could require a recreation, giving you something brand new. Like in Romans chapter 4, verse 19, Romans 4, verse 19, the Bible tells us that the womb of Sarah was already dead. So what Sarah got was a brand new womb. And I believe that's a, a word for someone out there listening to me. That even if the doctors have already said, either that your womb is damaged or is too old to conceive, in the name that's above every other name, you get a brand new one today. In John chapter 11, from verse 39 to 45, John 11, 39 to 45, when Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead, not only was he resurrected, the original sickness that killed him was taken care of at the same time. He got pure healing. But maybe 
something that will illustrate it more clearly is to be found in 2 Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14. 2 Kings 5 from verse 1 to 14. And it tells us the story of Naaman who was a leper. You know the story very well. When he was ordered to go and bathe in Jordan, the Bible says as he was coming out the seventh time, he had skin like that of a brand new baby. So when we are talking about pure healing, we are talking about healing that will not leave a scar behind. You know, wounds can heal. And the scar may remain. But when God gives you pure healing, there will be no scar left behind. And let me remind you of the story you've, you must have heard me tell before. Of a time when I traveled abroad and had just returned, and one of my daughters came and said, Sir, my grandmother is old had a problem, we took her to the hospital, they operated on her in the stomach. But maybe because of her old age, the wound refused to heal. And now when she eats, the food is coming out of the stomach. Please, I don't mind if grandma dies, but I don't want her to die in a mess. Could you pray that God will heal the wound? And then if God wants to take her, she can go. And since I couldn't travel, I asked to, asked to bring an handkerchief. I prayed over the handkerchief. She took the handkerchief to the grandma because uh, the, she was in a very special room. They kept her in the hospital because she could afford it, just waiting for the day when she would die. She laid the handkerchief on grandma, prayed a simple prayer like I instructed her to do. And when she came back the following day, not only was grandma healed, they couldn't even find the spot where they operated on her. God gave her pure healing. I am calling on that God who does not change. That every one of you in need of healing today, you won't get partial healing, but you'll get pure healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be light could mean God give me pure life vigorous life, life full of vitality. I don't want to be managing to live. I don't want to live as if I am half dead. Well, you say, what has light got to do with pure life? Well, in biology, we used to study about something they call photosynthesis. And it, 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 it has to do with light having effect on plants. And I can still remember, and probably you too will remember, in those days, a biology teacher who give us what they call controlled growing. They will sow corn in the open ground and sow corn covered with a pot on the same ground. After some days, when the corn sown on open ground has grown a bit, they will remove the pot from the other one and you will discover that that one too has grown. 
But the one that grew outside will be green and beautiful. The one that grew under the pot will be pale and sickly. And they point to us the fact that the one under the pot was sickly because it lagged light. I remember another example, another illustration that they give us. They will put a, another plant in a pot, covered by a pot, and they would drill a hole on the pot. The plant there will grow, and then it will find its way through the hole, drilled in the pot, searching for light. Because light has a lot to do with life, Healthy life, vigorous life. Scientists have proved that one of the reasons why old people surrender so easily to sickness, to viruses, is because they are kept at home all the time. They are not exposed to sunlight. And so when you say, let there be light, means God give me pure light, pure life, vigorous life, life full of vitality. For example, Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7 tells us that at the age of 120, Moses was still vigorous. His eyes were sharp. And from the description of Moses, at the age of 120, he could see father a son. And oh, you may say that was not clearly stated in the case of Moses. Well, let me give you a surprise. I'm not sure you paid attention to Genesis 25, verse 1. Genesis 25, verse 1 says, Abraham was old and well stricken in age. That means he wasn't just old, he was really old. And yet he took a new wife. <laughs> I found that really interesting. Because when you look at Genesis 24, if you read Genesis 24 from the beginning to the end, Isaac had married. Abraham was a hundred years old before he gave birth to Isaac. Isaac had matured. Isaac had married. After that, <laughs> Papa Abraham said, I can see Andrew a wife. That's what I mean by life. Full of vitality. Full of vigor. If you read Genesis, sorry, Joshua chapter 14 from verse 6 to 13. Joshua 14 from verse 6 to 13. The Bible tells us that Caleb said to Joshua, at the age of 40, you and I said, give us any mountain and we will drive out the giants. Now I am 85. I am still as strong as ever. I'm still ready to go to war. I'm still ready to take on giants. Give me this mountain. You know it is written in Deuteronomy 33, verse 25. Deuteronomy 33 from verse, uh, in verse 25. God made a promise. And that promise is for you and for me. 
He says, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. In other words, the older you grow, the stronger you should become. I want to encourage all of you who are listening to me today. Stop managing to live. Demand vigor from the Almighty God, the source of light. Pray that the Almighty God will renew your age like the eagles. After all, in John chapter 10, verse 10, John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Not just abundantly, but even more abundantly. I've always led my pastors on a walk during ministers' conference, particularly before the convention. And I would lead them on a walk, just a little walk, maybe about six kilometers, at times a little more. And then at the end of the walk, I'd be sitting down waiting for them to come. And I would be amused as I watch. And I see some people who are maybe 50 years old, coming, panting. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 16, And he said, as I am saying to you, that in due season, at the time of life, you shall embrace a son, your son, your daughter, your child. In his own time, God showed up in the situation of a family and their story changed. Just as they were about to give up, God showed up and surprised them. I got married with my husband in the year 2010, and since then we've been believing God for the fruit of the womb. We came for the Holy Ghost service last year, the Abuja Special Holy Ghost service, and a man came to testify about how the fire fell. Immediately, Daddy Joe mounted the pulpit. Daddy Joe said, For everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb, let the fire fall. That same month, that the month of November, I conceived. This year, August 14, God gave us the new Oluwa, Oluwa Shindara, it's Oluwa Lashen. Praise Oiza. My faith was really challenged because so many people came to us that we should try other option, but we stood on our ground because we know that the God of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the God of Daddy Joe, will surely do it. Since my baby came, ah, my faith has really been built and I've really learned, I've learned to rely on God totally for anything in life. God can give me in your life. I know he will surely give me whatsoever I ask of him. I'm really lying to rely on God. It has really built my faith. Like I said, if God can give me in Yolua, there's nothing I ask of him that he will not give me. So my faith in God is so strong now. Very, very supportive. Very, very supportive. He's the best husband. He has never for one day called me to say, what is happening or anything? No, rather, he would, he would even be the one praying for me. I was even the one on the worried side. But he has been very supportive. My in laws, wonderful people. My mother in law, she's late, but she's a very wonderful woman. 
And my sister-in-law, they are beautiful people. They are wonderful. They have never wanted trouble. Even my father-in-law, they did not trouble me for once. The one I have for them is that they should totally rely on God. It's only God's gift that is a perfect gift. Any other gift, if you go around looking for it, it will not last. It's only God that gives the best gifts. And the gift that will make you laugh last, that is my word for them. They should just rely on God. He's the only one that can do it. Wow. 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 What a word from God and what a faith-inspiring testimony. God is still in the business of doing the impossible. And that is why I want to announce to you that in due time, in due season, God will show up for you and shut up all your enemies. Till I come your way again next time, untouched by fate, let me congratulate you in advance. God bless you. The Word of God enjoins us to study to show ourselves approved of the Lord. If you are one of the people who desire to indeed be approved of God in all your ways, and you desire to understand God's ways, then you need to take Christian literature serious. There is a large collection of inspirational books from Pastor E. A. Adeboye, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, that you can pick and read from. Among the numerous titles are David, a man after God's heart, The Last Days, The Ultimate Financial Breakthrough, Divine Encounter, and many more. And just recently added are Time of Favor and The Sovereign Lord. Get yourself a copy. Get extra copies to bless the lives of people around you as well. The books are available at all CRM bookshops, all Christian bookshops, and bookstands in all RCCG province headquarters worldwide. Get yourself a copy of any of the books and be richly blessed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Delivering the word with passion and power. Redeemer's Network Television.